The breaking news at TalkSport is going to bring you live heavyweight boxing on Saturday, August the 12th. We can't wait for this, actually, if I'm being brutally honest. Anthony Joshua takes on Dillian White. It's live from the O2 Arena. Let's speak to the man responsible for putting this fight together, head of Matchroom Boxing. Eddie Hearn joins us. Eddie, good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great, boys. How are you doing? Good, Ed. Well, Thank good you. Friend. Eddie, I'm going to be brutally honest. I've known you for a long, long time. I'm going to be brutally honest with you, right? Some of the boxing fights that I've seen in the past, I look at and I'll just go, well, that's just a rip-off. I'm not going to name them. I'll be brutally honest. This one, I'm incredibly excited about, right? How, how important do you think it is for heavyweight boxing that finally we've got a fight that everyone's going to be talking about? Do you know what? So important because these guys, you know, for various reasons have been stalling lately, giving us great heavyweight fights. Um, this one is, is is wild because AJ's got the Wilder fight locked in in December. You know, we had meetings last week with the Saudis. Obviously, he, that's one of the biggest fights in boxing. And he wanted to fight in the interim. You know, he's been working with Derek James. He wanted to have that fight and he was insistent that it was Dillian White. And I'm, you know, I wasn't over the moon because I know it's dangerous. It's a fight that's built off emotion. They don't like each other. You saw what happened last summer at the O2. It's going to be an absolute firefight on August 12th. But I was with him last night. This is the one he wants. He wants a fight he can get up for. He doesn't want to have a, a nothing fight for the fans. This is a fight that's going to ignite British boxing as well. And, uh, yeah, massive fight. Massive fight for both men. Mm. Um, what about what about the, the, the prospect, Eddie, of that there's nowhere to go, whoever loses this one? I mean, again, we've, I've, I've been looking at a lot of text and emails we've had coming in. People are sort of saying we're getting more excited about the fact that that this is fight or flight for, for, for in this particular occasion. You know, whoever loses this one, that's probably the end of the line. I mean, do you yeah, see that way? So, you know, yeah, I think AJ... You know, I was with him last night in Dallas and all he wants to do is try and become heavyweight world champion again. If he loses to Dillian White at this stage, that's looking like a million miles away. Mm. So what else do you want to do? I don't know whether he'll put that pressure on himself. For Dillian, I think 100%, really. This is this is it. And um, that's why it's so dangerous. You know, as I said, you got that Deontay Wilder fight in December. He could have just waited. You know, he could have just had an easy fight, a gimme fight at the O2. But he's decided to, to roll the dice and... I think he wants a fight that he can get excited about. And I know he wants to go in and do a number on Dillian White. They don't like each other. They never have. It's 1-1. One, one, one in the amateurs, one in the pros. And we know this fight always gives us something special. And uh, it's going to be electric at the O2. Was it? I read quite a lot about how easy or difficult it was to put this fight together. The stumbling block, from my understanding, was this, this rematch clause that was since taken out. Was that it? Was that the only problem, putting this one together? Yeah, I mean, I think I've got to give credit to both because, you know, this is a stadium fight that we're doing in the O2. But, you know, we wanted to move to the O2. So maybe there wasn't as much money in the fight as Dillian White thought. I thought maybe when he turned down the offer, the fight was dead. There was a rematch clause. And that's something that we put in because he's got Deontay Wilder locked in in December. So you want to have that protection being such a big A side. Dillian White said, I'm not having a rematch clause. AJ went, no problem, take it out. I didn't even know there was one. And like, this is the problem with this fight a little bit in terms of common sense because it's a fight that's built off emotion. Mm. They want to fight each other. Dillian White wants to get his hands on Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua wants to knock out Dillian White. And I think that's when you're going to see the best of AJ. You saw against Franklin and you saw when Dillian boxed Franklin as well. They're just not up for those sort of ticking over fights, and that can be dangerous. And I think that's why AJ said, forget giving me a tick over fight, put me in a real fight that I can really work on the things and show the things that I've been working on with Derek James, one that I can get up for. And I think you're going to see that fight from him on August 12th. Eddie, let me ask you, that, that fight with Deontay Wilder in December, is that happening, irrelevant of this result? If Joshua loses, is he no. still... He's not. No, no. He's, I mean, look... He's got to well, win whether, the fight, whether, I don't know, you know how the white fight goes, but we've been told categorically that the deal on the table is not the deal if he loses to Dillian White. They didn't want him to fight Dillian White. You know, they, it was almost like, look, please don't fight Dillian White. You don't need to. We've got this fight in December. But AJ said, no, I want to fight. His plan was to fight three times this year. And if he wins on August 12th, he'll go into the Deontay Wilder fight with loads of momentum. And again, just adding to that incredible CV. So... Like I said, I think he should be praised for the fact that he wants to give you a real fight rather than just a tick-over fight till he fights Wilder. And this is very dangerous. Has he got to win it well, Ed? 
Sorry? Has he got to win the fight well? Has he got to has he got to put on a no, little bit of a show? I mean, I think at this stage it's win by any means necessary, but this fight's not going twelve rounds. Dillian White will try, you know, the press conference is on Monday in London. Dillian White will try to get in AJ's head. He'll look him in the eye, he'll try and, you know, put doubts in his mind, he'll try and talk to him. I know exactly what he'll do. But I think AJ's up for that. I think he wants that at this stage in his career. And I think if AJ can win by knockout in this fight, it puts a massive statement out to the to the heavyweight division, and you go into that world of fight with plenty of confidence. But at this stage, it's win by any means necessary. Mm. Eddie, um, earlier on in our chat, I mentioned to you about how important this is for heavyweight boxing. We had Jake Paul on yesterday. He said, uh, alluded to the fact that heavyweight boxing is in the gutter at the moment. Um, when I when I look at proposed fights that are around the corner, I see Tyson Fury against Francis Ngannou, and I, I just think what a waste of time that would be. And you said, you know, it is a big fight, hopefully to put heavyweight boxing back on the map where it should be. Do the fighters feel that that's the, the reason that these two fighters are getting together? Does Anthony Joshua feel, you know, he's got a job to do for the heavyweight division? Yeah, I think that everyone, we live in a world of criticism, don't mean stick. I mean, you got, if, if you listen to, to Twitter, you'd never really want to get out of bed, would you, in the morning? But when you look at AJ's CV, and resume. I don't, I don't see the criticism. I think he's always been in those big fights. And here's an occasion. You know, he's going to make an absolute fortune to fight Dillian, uh, Deontay Wilder. But he wants to risk it all against Dillian White because he loves the fight. He loves the excitement. He loves the thrill. And when he boxed Jermaine Franklin last time, I don't think he had that thrill. I don't think he had that same feeling. So this time he said, I don't want to have another one of those fights. I will roll the dice. And that's so what's so exciting about the fight, that you know, he's rolling the dice before he fights Deontay Wilder, which is which is unique. And, you know, even look, Alexander Usyk's fighting Daniel Dubois before he fights maybe Tyson Fury. So I think you've got a good good couple of fights there for the mm. heavyweight um, landscape. You know, Tyson Fury's Tyson Fury's going to do his own thing, but we're in the business of Anthony Joshua. He's got a huge fight August 12th, and if he wins that, He's fighting Deontay Wilder. So it, what, six months that would be for him? Let me ask you this. This is a massive if, this question, right? But I'm asking from the point of view of boxing fans, and if Frank Warren was on, I'd ask him the same question. If he if he comes through this unscathed and beats Dillian White and then he beats Deontay Wilder, this fight with Tyson Fury that all boxing fans want to see, is it getting closer as time elapses or is it getting further away? I mean, look, I can't answer for Tyson Fury. You know, look, he's a, he, what he's done is incredible. He's a huge name. I don't know his motives. I don't know if he wants to be undisputed. I don't know, or I don't know if he wants to continue doing what he's doing, making a load of money. And, and either way, he's entitled to do what he wants to do. AJ has always been about the fights. He's agreed to fight Deontay Wilder. He's now agreed to rematch Dillian White before he fights Deontay Wilder. And he will fight Tyson Fury at a drop of the hat. You can't question his credentials, but all of it's irrelevant. You know, you're talking about if he beats White, if he beats Wilder, will we get the Fury fight? We, we're done wasting time on that. We can only control what we can control, which is give British boxing a massive fight with Dillian White on August 12th and then give him an even bigger one against Deontay Wilder in December. OK, let me ask you one question. I know boxing fans have been texting in this question. I'll ask it on their behalf. Uh, I don't know if you know the undercard yet, and maybe that's part of your answer. Fury against Dillian White was 24 95 This one is 26 99 uh, mm-hmm. Can you explain why it's gone up, and has that got anything to do with the undercard? Uh, no, I mean, it was different broadcasters, firstly. So all broadcasters have a different pay-per-view price point. There will be a fantastic undercard, which will be announced at the press conference on Monday. Um, I think some of the pay-per-views, I think the last uh, pay-per-view, I can't remember, was it Usyk? It was twenty nine ninety nine or something like that. So it's always around £24, not £24, £26. And, you know, pay-per-view is pay-per-view. We've been there a million times. This fight is pay-per-view on any platform. The fact that it's on the zone, um, it will be available on Sky's platforms as well. And obviously TalkSport will be carrying it. It's a massive fight, be a massive undercard. We could have done it in a stadium. Tickets will go on sale next week. Good luck, and we look forward to seeing you there. Okay. Have you got a name for the fight yet? They've always got catchy names. Have you got one yet, Eddie? History of violence. History of <laughs> violence. Who who comes up with these? <laughs> Actually, wasn't me. <laughs> mostly, mostly Andy. I sit in the office. I go, "What about?" And then say it, and they go, "Oh God, no." So this one, not me. History of violence. Okay, I like it. And of course, it's the O2. Um, this fight could have easily been big enough for a stadium, right? Why wasn't it yeah, in a stadium? Sure. 
just because you know we booked the O2, the O2 a while ago, we didn't expect it to be Dillian White when we booked it. Oh, I see. But there's something about the O2. You know that first fight between AJ and Dillian White at the O2 was one of the best nights British boxing's ever had. You know you had Stormzy who was emerging on the scene, wrapped him out that night. I hope he comes back and now he's big time and gives us another little rendition of that for the ring walk. Um, tickets are going to go like hotcakes, but O2 is a special place, and those two have had so many wars in that venue. Um, they're going to give us another one August 12th. Eddie, just finally, the shape he's in, AJ, right now. Great shape. I was with him, you know, like he, he just everything that he does is dedicated to improving um, and getting the best out of himself physically. Like, he's really excited about this fight. He's buzzing about the fight. I think he's probably a little bit nervous about the fight. There's people asking questions. He's really gelling with Derek James. He sparred 12 rounds yesterday. He's in tremendous shape. This is where we're going to really see what AJ's got left in the tank. And it's mm. a real grudge match that you're going to see the spike back in him August 12th. OK, I don't know how true it is. Finally, I understand he's got a new spine partner in the shape of a mattress. Is that is that true or not? No, that he, for some reason, <laughs> he posted himself whacking a mattress on, on Snapchat. I don't know what he did. I mean, you know. But I'll tell you one thing, uh, you know, being with him last night, which is really good to see, he's happy. And a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. Okay, so, listen, uh, would... let me ask, I'll let you go in a sec. Um, we are looking forward to Joshua White 3. When are we going to see Jordan Hearn 2? Oh, mate, any time. He's, still, he's probably still a little bit sore, but you never know. Whenever, whenever. We okay. Um, listen, thank you for coming on. People on um, on YouTube watching will be able to see you. You've just come off the flight from Mexico, I understand. Um, if I if I come off a long-haul flight, I look like I've been dragged through a bush. You look remarkably good, annoyingly good, actually. Answer, I... Honestly, have you done your hair before you got on the phone? Not really. It's all over the place. I was in <laughs> Dallas last night. Dallas, well, we've got Monterey show tomorrow night in Mexico, and then we've got Detroit next week. And I was flying from Monterey to Detroit for the show, but now they've called the press conference in London, so I've got to go back to London on Saturday and then fly back on Monday to Detroit or whatever. I don't know what it is. We'll, just, we'll carry on. Just till, be till careful. Those seats in first class, they can really annoy you sometimes. Really do your back. Yeah, you. I, can, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, Eddie. Uh, listen, um, congratulations on this fight. As I said to you earlier on, I tell it like it is. There's some fights that have been put on by various boxing promoters and I don't really see the point. This one, I'm extremely excited about. I can't wait for this. It's going to be an absolute um, humdinger. Thank you so much for your time, Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, guys. Take care. He does look annoyingly good, actually, doesn't he? Does he does look well. Yeah. He does look well. Yeah. yeah. He's going to be a busy man, like isn't he? Is it hairspray? He's, He's going to be a busy man. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.